One of the most difficult things pitchers must go through during their time in MLB is make the transition from a starter to a reliever. The starter in this scenario is usually losing velocity and growing old, and this can often be a tough pill to swallow for guys trying to remain in the league but not lose their regular role. However, plenty of starters have adjusted to the reliever role fluidly with some performing far better in the bullpen than they did ever in the rotation. Guys that jump to my mind when I'm talking about this are Wade Davis, who won World Series rings as the closer for both the Royals and Cubs in 2015 and 2016. There's also Zach Britton, who was a troubled starting pitcher turned dominant closer for the Baltimore Orioles and New York Yankees. And Brad Hand, who floundered as a starter in Miami, but has bounced around as a great closer for San Diego and Cleveland. Today, we're gonna go back a decade and talk about a player that fits this bill perfectly. I'm sure most, if not all of you watching this video, are familiar with the legend of Kerry Wood as a Cub. In respect of what he did during his long time in Chicago, let's do a quick retrospective. Wood was the fourth overall pick in the 1995 MLB draft and made it to the bigs three years later. He'd make history in just his fifth career start with a game against the Astros that I'm sure most, if not all of you, are familiar with. Kerry Wood struck out 20 batters in a shutout against Houston where he allowed just one hit and no walks. This game put Wood on the map and despite him missing the last month of the season, he took home Rookie of the Year honors in the NL in 1998. Just so you know, this will be the most we're talking about this game today. Kerry Wood stayed consistent during his time as a Chicago Cub, despite battling injuries on and off, including a Tommy John surgery in 1999 and numerous shoulder and elbow injuries during the mid-2000s. In 2003, he owned the fastest pitch in the majors, topping out at 95.4 miles per hour. This may not be considered a big deal in modern times, but back then, this was a huge deal for both Chicago fans and baseball fans in general. The fact of the matter is that Kerry Wood was beloved in Chicago, and it's truly a shame he wasn't able to bring home a ring for the Cubbies. Wood is remembered most for his absurd strikeout rates, as well as his Rookie of the Year honors, but is perhaps defined most by his control issues, punctuated by a 4.3 walk per nine rate over his time in Chicago. As his injuries continued to pile up in the mid-2000s, Kerry Wood was forced to accept a reliever role with the Cubs in order to stay on their roster in 2007, but this turned out to be a pretty good move. From from 2007 to 2008, Kerry Wood pitched to a 3.28 ERA in 87 games as one of the Cubs' best relievers. However, they would not offer him a contract following the 2008 season, forcing him to sign elsewhere despite his desire to stay in Chicago. He'd sign a two-year deal with the Cleveland Indians and become their closer, but his numbers began to dwindle. Many believe that without his all-star velocity and the comfort of having his Cubs uniform on, Kerry Wood was doomed in Cleveland. With the Indians finishing in fourth place in both 2009 and 2010, many believe believed it was the end of the road for Kerry Wood and it was time to hang up the cleats. But no one could have foreseen a return to dominance for Kerry Wood once he was traded from the Indians to a special team in the Bronx of New York. And this brief yet effective era of dominance for Wood would ultimately bring him home to Chicago just a year later. And this is where our story for today's video truly begins. He, he went to Jared! Baseball is back and going up to the batter's box confident is a great feeling and very important. If your junk isn't protected, you're doomed. You don't want to forget to whack your weeds and keep the holes clean so you feel your best. Manscaped, the global leaders in below-the-waist grooming, have an exclusive deal for my audience. Manscaped's line of products is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. And with technology like the Weed Whacker, the Lawn Mower 3.0, the Crop Preserver, and the Crop Reviver, it's hard not to see why. In addition to their awesome line of products, Manscaped is also partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to raise awareness for testicular cancer. So while you're buying these incredible products and protecting your downstairs area, you're also raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men age 15 to 35. So with all this hygiene and protection in mind, I wouldn't blame you for rushing to their website right now. But before you click away, make sure you remember to use the promo code OLIVE to get 20% off and free shipping on any products you order from their website. Use the link in the description to see what they have to offer now. As I mentioned before, Kerry Wood was not very effective in Cleveland. He began the 2010 season pitching to a 6.30 ERA in 23 games for the Indians, and he'd be sidelined with a blister injury in mid-July. The Indians thought it'd be best to flip him elsewhere, and on July 31st, the Yankees acquired Kerry Wood from the Indians for two minor leaguers who'd never make the show. The Yankees' bullpen ranked 15th in the league in reliever ERA at 3.95. This was perfectly average, but they would need an X-factor to truly compete with the big dogs of the American League. In 
proof they needed a reliable eighth inning bridge to Mariano Rivera. Jabba Chamberlain's numbers were declining after the failed experiment of making him a starter, so Kerry Wood would get the nod in the setup role despite his poor performance in 2010 thus far. As I mentioned before, Kerry Wood was just as effective as a reliever compared to when he was a starter. His ERA numbers between these two splits are fairly similar, as well as his whip and his K per nine. The only stat that changes drastically is his walk per nine, as when Kerry Wood got older in his career, his velocity went down and his control grew wilder. Kerry Wood would allow a home run to Aaron Hill in his second appearance against the Toronto Blue Jays, and after walking two in his first appearance, the Yankees were cautious in their reliance of Wood in high leverage situations. But he would quell those worries almost immediately after. Kerry Wood would prove integral to their ensuing playoff run, pitching to a 0.69 ERA in 24 games between August and September. He was especially good in the latter month, not allowing a single run in 12 appearances. Overall, Wood would have 21 straight scoreless appearances from August 6th to September 26th. In this dominant stretch, he lowered his season ERA from 6.23 to 3.00. The second of his only two regular season runs allowed for the Yankees came on his last appearance of the season against the Boston Red Sox, where he'd walk three in one inning. Despite his dominance as the setup man for the Yankees, Wood's control remained an issue in spite of his great ERA. In 13 of his 24 appearances, he'd walk a batter, with four multi-walk appearances scattered in there as well. But Wood had a knack for escaping every jam he found himself in, and the walks never really amounted to be a huge issue for him getting outs. After the addition of Kerry Wood, the Yankees' bullpen ERA fell from 3.95 to 3.47, rising their MLB rank from 15th to 7th. Kerry Wood made history as a Yankee, posting the second lowest single season reliever ERA in the past 20 years of Yankee baseball. From 2000 to 2020, the only reliever who was better in a stretch of 20 or more innings was Jabba Chamberlain in 2007, who posted a 0.38 ERA in 24 innings. The list of relievers since 2010 with a single season ERA under 0.7 is extremely lucrative. It includes the likes of Devin Williams, Craig Kimbrell, Zach Britton, Fernando Rodney, and Kenley Jansen, in addition to Kerry Wood as a Yankee. So despite his control issues and the fact that many of his scoreless appearances came with runners on base, the Yankees were prepared to move forward into the playoffs with Kerry Wood as the setup man to Mariano Rivera. And Kerry Wood wouldn't disappoint in the playoffs either. Between the American League Division Series against the Twins and the American League Championship Series against the Texas Rangers, Kerry Wood compiled a 2.25 ERA in seven games of work. He struck out seven batters and walked five as the Yankees would fall a couple games short of returning to the World Series for a second consecutive year. Although this obviously wasn't the result the Yankees wanted, the mileage they got out of 33-year-old reliever Kerry Wood had to be satisfactory. Behind the arms of Wood, Moe, David Robertson, and Jabba Chamberlain, this was one of the best Yankee bullpens in recent memory. And despite the very inflated walk per nine rate and the fact that he wasn't closing games, Kerry Wood found his best form in 2010 with the Yankees. In my mind, seeing a pairing of Kerry Wood and Mariano Rivera would be must-watch baseball regardless of the year. And yet, I only remembered this topic because of a chat member in one of my streams. It was an extremely brief stint in Yankees history that has gone mostly forgotten despite the absurdity and pure entertainment that it brought fans for two months in 2010. And with the the end of the 2010 season came Wood's opportunity to find a new team headed into next year. And despite numerous multi-year offers and lucrative deals, Wood knew exactly where he wanted to go. Wood would get his wish granted and return to the Cubs the following year in 2011, closing out his career in 2012. Wood never got to sniff World Series baseball, but I think he got his ultimate wish in finishing his career in Chicago. And although he'll always be remembered for his dominant performance in his rookie year, we should never forget the amazing season where Kerry Wood was partners in crime with the greatest closer of all time. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time.
sedated.